it's very important to the process of understanding Google Cloud and passing the certification exam that you go through the question and attempt answering it yourself first. So pause the video, work through the question. We'll catch up in just a little while and I'll show you how I do it. In this project scenario, your company has decided to make a major revision of the API in order to create better experiences for their developers. They need to keep the old version of the API available and deployable while allowing new customers and testers to try out the new API. They want to keep the same SSL and DNS records in place to serve both APIs. What should they do? So the requirement here is to support a completely different API version, which is a major upgrade. And we need to keep both of these available at the same time, such that some of it can be accessed by the new users, but we do not want anything changed with respect to how it is accessed. So from the requirements, we know that the changes are significant. Since we have to keep the old version of the API available, we cannot remove it and we also do not want to make any changes to the old code or deployment, right? So what is, is going to be exactly as it is and something else would have to be changed. Allow new customers and testers to try out the new API. So we have to have a way to allow some users, right? Certain customers and the testing team to have access also to the new API. We need to keep the same SSL and DNS records in place to serve both APIs. So the new APIs have to use the same certificate and the same IP and domain name, right? So we cannot change anything about what the world sees with respect to access to the API, right? And both API versions have to be served at the exact same point. With the requirements understood, now let's look at the options. Option A suggests configure a new load balancer for the new version of the API. So the existing version uses the load balancer using and for the new API it's saying put up a new load balancer. But a new load balancer will require a new public IP and therefore changes to either the DNS records and the SSL. So this is not a viable option for the requirement that we have because we need to retain the same SSL and DNS records. So option A is not viable. Option B suggests reconfigure old clients to use a new endpoint for the new API. So this is recommending that the new API now takes over the SSL and DNS records of what existed before, whereas the old one is set up at a um, at a new endpoint. This is not accessible because this is still a new API version that is being tested up, right? And all the existing customers are going to um, connect to the new one, which they shouldn't, and they're going to lose access to the older one, or they're going to have to reconfigure things to figure out where the older API is. That should not be allowed, right? So a new endpoint will again require changing SSL and DNS for somebody, right? In this particular case, the um, old deployment, and that is also not allowed. So option B is not acceptable. Option C suggests have the old API forward traffic to the new API based on the path. So we do know that based on the path, we can say, okay, this is going to slash v2 and that is going to slash v1, right? If it has slash v2 in the URL, then we say, let it all go to the new API. However, doing it this way will require code changes to the old API, right? And we'll have to redeploy that code. I don't think a product manager or your deployment team is uh, going to allow that, right? Because we are trying to force fit this ability to um, forward traffic from the older one to the newer one, which is error prone and the excess effort required to recoding it and redeploying it. The good thing about this, it does retain the same SSL and DNS. So you have the same SSL and DNS, the same IP address, users hit that, and then we would be able to reroute it. However, for all the excess work involved and for the problem, uh, for the issue that could be problematic, 
we shouldn't be selecting this as a right option. So option C is not workable. Option D suggests that you use separate backend services for each API path behind the load balancer. So now there are separate backend services that are individually scaling. Both of them sit behind the same load balancer and depending on the API path, the load balancer routes the request to one backend or the other. So if, for example, it had the uh, URL slash v2 as a perfect prefix, then it will go to the new version of the API backend, right? Whereas if it didn't, it could go to the original one itself. Now, this approach retains the same SSL and DNS, right? Because the front end is still the same, right? The only thing we are doing here is that to route the traffic, we are making a configuration change in the load balancer. So no code changes, no redeployment. All we do is a minor configuration change in the load balancer to allow traffic to be routed to a different backend depending on the URL path. This suits all the requirements that we have and therefore becomes the best option to choose for this requirement. Okay. So the right way to do this would be to use separate backend services for each API path and then to configure that URL path in the load balancer to route the traffic to the appropriate backend. If you thought that content was great, you absolutely must check out all our new upcoming content. So subscribe right away. Mm -hmm.